Yeah, what's up? What's up? It's your boy D O M O Damuto. We're back with another video. Today we're watching Unreal in Gaming. The new Dragon Ball Super manga just dropped. Earth new superheroes. Goku and Vegeta trains for Frieza. Chapter 88 of Dragon Ball Super Review. <laughs> you know I'm excited, bro. It's been way too long. A few months. Too, it's way too long, bro. So we're gonna get into it, bro. It's a long video. Let's get into it. Bro, it was hard for me not to watch this. As we officially open you know up Dragon Ball Super Manga Chapter number 88 with our heroes being shown finally arriving on Beerus's planet, as it would only now appear as though with all parties involved, oh, yeah. including the Oracle Fish, Whis, Beerus, and Goku being shown chill, eating, the only other individual that seems to not be partaking in this feast is none other than Wait, Vegeta, as he seemingly enough has his mind set on something else. It was only while our heroes were shown stuffing their faces where the narration went on to add, Beerus's planet, Goku and Vegeta's battle to the death with gas on planet Serial, ended up in an abrupt loss to Black Frieza. After that, they returned to Beerus' planet. Goku was now aware of oh, the massive power nigga. gap between him and his foe, as was Vegeta, and as such, they continued their training in hopes of defeating Frieza, as meanwhile back on Earth, we then begin to take a look as to what Goten and Trunks had been up to while their fathers were training for Black Frieza, as the Saiyan duo went on to comment, Evil must be mopped up. We leave the world cleaner than we found it. We are the cleanup heroes say a man x1 say a man x2 saying, ready to man. up they shout as it was only they literally they go during this real. announcement as goten and trunks went on to make their entrance there was a jewelry store right in the middle of getting robbed as the criminal went on to ask what the hey whoa they just flipped over that vehicle the civilians respond bold of you to rob a jewelry store in broad daylight say a man x1 says but too brash for your own good say a man x2 continues it, 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 it's them. D -d 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 Those would be heroes who popped up in West Capital recently. Oh, yeah, the heist leader asks. How dare you wreck my ride like that, you snot nosed wackos? Back off unless you want to die. Didn't Gohan save like a robbery, a bank, somebody, a robbery the first time he did the superhero shit? You know what I'm saying? Aye. But it was only just when the heist shit. criminal had gone as far as to draw his gun, where from out of nowhere, Trunks had now gone as far as to teleport right in front of the heist leader by grabbing onto his pistol and crushing it as Trunks went on to tell him, you won't be yeah, dirtying our town on my anymore. Today. Not on my watch, yeah, watch he says. Death battle. As it was death just before you know it with Trunks being shown crushing the gun that, uh, and then being yeah, shown putting it inside of a bag, Trunks had now gone as far I'm as to today. add even more insult to injury by handing the bag over to the heist leader by telling him, now dispose of your trash properly, you, you little punk! As the criminals were seemingly not willing to go down without putting up some kind oh, of a shit. fight, so instead, the criminals unbeknownst to them in knowing who Goten and Trunks actually are, had tried their best in attacking them with Trunks and Goten being shown dodging each and every single one of their strikes. With the boys being shown having to effortlessly put the criminals in their place, it was only upon having to now find a knife where Trunks went on to continue, nah, knives can't be disposed with normal guards. Garbage. Oh, what a pain. Oh, they haven't beaten us yet, the heist leader says. But he inevitably spoke too soon because with one simple kick to the face, the criminals were now down and out as Goten and Trunks, Saiyan Man X1 and X2 had now succeeded in their mission in cleaning up crime within the city by being shown they having to stick their thumbs out up, and man. shouting, Fuck, clean up complete. As moments later with the police now being shown arriving, Goten and Trunks were now shown above on top of a building having to look down upon the crime scene with the two then finally being shown having to unmask, it was only from there where Trunks went on to respond, oh, that went great, Goten. It was perfect, Trunks Goten responds. And the best part, our awesome pose, he says. Just like clean up God himself. Say a man X1, say a man X2, here to fight, as of course mimicking their favorite superhero, which goes by the name of Clean God, in which it was only coincidentally enough as they both went on to turn around in noticing a massive billboard of Clean God behind them, where Trunks went on to add the, the poses and the catchphrases uh, you think we're copying too much from him nah it's fine goten says we're a duo after all but as soon as goten from there was shown getting a notification on his phone by checking it it was only just upon having to see this notification where goten went on to continue hey a news bulletin what trunks asks uh, a big theft <laughs> off to our next mission then armed robbers huh what town uh it was actually a cyber attack goten says 
identity theft. They stole a bunch of people's personal info. A cyber attack. Oh, darn it. We can't beat up scumbags <laughs> over the internet. Oh, well, you've never been great with computers, Trunks Goten says. I just want to face off against some mighty evil and do it in style, Trunks adds. Uh, but maybe there's no place for superheroes in modern society. Well, a peaceful world is a good thing, Goten says. Yeah, yeah, I can't argue there, but still. As it was only right after having to get his notification where Goten was now shown having to get a phone call by none other than his mom, Chi Chi, to which as soon as Goten had gone as far as to answer, where Chi Chi went on to shout, Goten, what are you doing? M -m mom, you should have been home a while ago. Yeah. Right, Goten says. Sorry, on my way now. To where in a state of panic with Goten being shown changing out of his outfit, it was only from there where Trunks went on to add, our transformation sequences aren't heroic at all. Oh, I wish we had some kind of a special transformation watch like Gohan, oh, especially since our folks don't really know about any of this. Uh, I know, I'll have Pilaf make us what we need, Trunks says. Huh? You can just ask for stuff like that, Goten asks? Yeah, well, it's kind of a long story, Trunks says. Lend me your costume. Oh, uh, sure, Goten responds. See you at school tomorrow. Which even then through and through as Goten was shown taking his leave, Trunks, on the other hand, had decided that he wanted to remain as he was and sneak his way back home instead, but not without soon after having to notice his grandparents shopping for flowers nearby, to which being who he is and after vowing to never give up his identity of who he truly is as say a man X1, Trunks from that point was very hesitant to make a move only because he knew that his grandparents would immediately recognize him, thus putting an end to the say a man X1 persona, so to protect his identity from being revealed, Trunks quickly then geared back up only for his grandfather to go as far as to notice him walking away, with Trunks acting as though nothing around him was going on until being called out by Dr. Briefs as Dr. Briefs went on to shout, hey, that's that something something man, which had now led Trunks down the path of ultimately having no other choice than to respond to his grandfather by turning around, to where before you know it as quickly as Trunks had done so, he was only from that point then shown immediately getting into character and pretending as though nothing was going on around him, which was of course until ironically the family pet's dinosaur had immediately picked up on Trunks' scent, as this in and of itself was a very unusual situation that was noted by Dr. Briefs, only because Dr. Briefs had made a note that the dinosaur would only respond in such a friendly manner if the animal were to recognize the scent of an owner, to which ultimately then prompts Trunks in having to downplay the overall situation by adding that quote, superheroes are typically loved by all and the fact that the dinosaur simply likes him is because he's a superhero. In an act of desperation before having his identity be revealed, Trunks was then from that point then shown immediately taking off in a hurry, which was a very interesting encounter that Dr. Briefs had made a fire. note of after having to encounter say a man X1, only because within that moment Dr. Briefs had noted that there have been quote a lot of superheroes flying around town these days and interestingly enough Dr. Briefs had seemingly enough also kind of recognized the voice behind say a man X1 that was of course until Dr. Briefs' wife Panchi had quickly made a side note to her husband in further letting Dr. Briefs know that she would love to meet and talk to a superhero of her own one day, of course not knowing that her actual grandson is a literal superhero on the low now, which had nevertheless excited Panchi by the overall idea of her actually meeting a superhero one day, she then goes as far as to show Dr. Briefs a huge bouquet of flowers that she had handpicked herself in order to gift them to Pan in celebration of her starting kindergarten, right. but the family dinosaur then begins to pick up on- So just a little slice of life. Uh, manga right now but you know it's cool i like the story i like how it's going though something very weird that's going down in the distance as despite panchi asking dr briefs to choose from which batch of flowers to gift pan with dr briefs making a side note that he ought to gift pan a plane instead since he remembers how badly pan wanted to be just like piccolo and the others in terms of having to fly it was only just then where in an act of anger the family dinosaur had now quickly responded to a very high and unusual amount of distressed capsule corp robots that were now seemingly beginning to make their way towards them 
as with each and every single robot now being shown having to run right past them, to which the reason for that was not because the robots were on the attack, but more or less instead, all of the robots were being pursued by none other than an actual zombie, to where a seemingly undead corpse striking fear into the CPU systems of dozens of Capsule Corp helper robots is something that you won't see every day in modern Dragon Ball, however, it was only rather soon after where Panchi had now come face to face with the exact zombie that was shown chasing the robots, with Panchi not displaying any sense of fear or concern but rather instead, had tried to make light of the overall situation, smiling and laughing about it, to where interestingly between them, the only individual who actually seemed as though they were taken back by the overall situation of a zombie being there, happened to of course coincidentally be none other than Dr. Briefs, with his wife being shown having to display no fear or concern despite there being a zombie in front of them. The next day back at Capsule Corp, we then see how Trunks had managed to enter through the garage in meeting Pilaf and the gang as they were shown fixing robots, with Trunks being shown having to enter by greeting everyone and responding, Morning all! Pilaf, how's my request from yesterday coming along? Ah, good morning, young master. Well, one of them is done. Oh, done already? Oh, thanks a bunch, Trunks says. As simple as a request can be, Gotens will be done by tomorrow, Pilaf says. Oh, awesome! Thanks, Pilaf. Ahem, in exchange, Pilaf says. Bulma doesn't need to know about the stealing of the Dragon Balls, right? Uh, yeah, sure thing, Trunks says. As long as you keep our superhero deal a secret. <sighs> ah, rest easy, Pilaf says. I haven't uttered a word to Shu or Mai. And what might you two be conspiring about, Bulma went on to surprisingly chime in. Uh, uh, hi, Mom. Uh, us? Conspiring? Nah. Uh, whatever it is. Aren't you late for school? Oh, crap, Trunks says. Yeah. Uh, thanks again. To which, ironically, as Trunks was shown leaving and now being shown bumping into Mai, all of a sudden, oh, it that. looked as though Trunks was beginning to simp over her as Mai was beginning to drop the box with Trunks being shown helping her by responding. But hey, uh, that looks heavy, Mai. Uh, let me help. Is, uh, is here okay? Is, is this good? Uh, sure. Thanks, Mai says. Hey, while you're at it, Shu went on to chime in. Mind helping me with something else, too? A a actually, actually, Mai, I was hoping that we could... Ahem, Chu went on to cut in. This one's heavy, too. About what, Mai asks? Uh, later. Once I get home, Trunks responds. Uh, bye-bye. To which, as soon as Trunks oh, was shown having shit. to leave the garage, Bulma immediately knew what Pilaf and the gang were up to, with Bulma immediately having to confront Pilaf in reminding him that she knew that he was going to steal the Dragon Balls, of course, courtesy of the cameras that are planted all throughout Capsule Corp, to which eerily similar to that of what Gohan did during the events of Dragon Ball Z, Trunks was shown on his bike racing to school as fast as he possibly could, in not only being shown grabbing food along the way on top of also picking up trash while he was cycling his way to school, but what's interesting about this is you get to actually see the difference between what Goku and Vegeta are doing by comparison to what Goten and Trunks are doing, because finally upon having to arrive in front of Blue Hall High School, Trunks knew that he was very late for class, so what he attempted to do instead, knowing the fact that he was going to get in trouble, was Trunks tried to ease his way into the classroom by sneaking in through a window, but it seemingly looked as though Trunks had gone as far as to make too much noise, with his professor being shown catching him and responding, ahem, Trunks, not even the heir to Capsule Corporation gets to slip in after the bell. Uh, sorry, sir. Continue this tardy streak and your time at this school may be over. Ah, uh, got it. Yeah. Yeah, smooth move, man, one of the classmates went on to tell him. Hey, what's been going on? With Trunks responding, I've been busy. It's not like duty is just calls after school. Duty? What duty? Ah, oh, just forget it. Hey, that won't cut it, Mr. Future CEO. Oh, that's the thing, Compass Trunks went on to respond. I don't want to run a corporation. Let him know, Trunks. Why not, Compass asks. It's your ticket. I ain't gonna lie, there's a lot of Trunks and Goten content right now. Well, Trunks content right now. Of like, being richer than I rich, fuck with it. I which fuck with it. sounds real boring to me. I need more excitement in my life. To where a little later on inside the school hallway with one of the students being shown confronting Trunks, it was only upon having to do so where she from there went on to ask, Well, I hear you're looking for excitement. A little adventure with Trunks asking, Uh, what do you mean, Rula? Well, did you hear about the ghosts, Rula asks? Well, uh -huh. ghosts? G ghosts? 
Oh yeah, Compass chimes in. I heard the hockey team had a sighting. Apparently they appear near the abandoned mansion on Mount Butterfly. Yeah, you want to check it out after school? Think of it as a dare, she says. Oh, we're right in, Compass responds. Trunks? Is it ghosts? Uh, they're too silly. Besides, I've got a packed schedule today. Oh, what happened to craving excitement, man? Uh, it's not like that, Trunks says. Oh, I wonder what's gotten into him. As little do they know, Trunks was actually terrified of ghosts. I got what he's going hard at Piccolo himself, right now. What's, what's going on with him? Just give me a break. I can't handle ghosts and ghouls and all that spooky junk. In which later on, after school with everyone being shown leaving, Trunks had now gone as far as to spot Goten by shouting, Yo, Goten, video games at my place again, right? Oh, hey, a Trunks. Yeah. And video game it up they did because meanwhile, back at Capsule Corp with Goten and Trunks being shown playing the actual clean god video game, they were both seemingly engaged in the game until Goten had gone as far as to spot something with Trunks responding, Ugh, games are great, but I want to kick butt IRL too. Now, I bet you can't wait to use your new transformation watch, huh? Goten asks. Man, I want one too. Actually, Trunks says, I gave it a trial run today. Already? Oh, did you find some crime to fight? Nope, Trunks says, but I transformed and flew to the movie theater during my free period to buy these. Whoa, day one tickets for the Clean God movie? We thought we'd never get our hands on those. Yep, complete with an in-person meet and greet with the movie star, Trunks adds. Oh, shit. oh too cool, man. Uh, but the thing is, Goten, I'm real sorry, but I could only get two. And uh, there's someone I really want to ask out. What? No way, for real? Oh, let me guess. Is it my... Look, look, I, I know I owe you one, Trunks says, but uh, give me a minute while I go ask her out, okay? And ask her out, he tries, because with Trunks finally manning up and walking right back to Capsule Corp, he from that point wasted little time in walking in by them being shown having to spot many robots that peel off in the gang were fixing, with Trunks now being shown finally having the courage to walk up to Mai and asking, so, uh, Mai, remember that one chat that I wanted to have with you? Well, are you free this Saturday? I've got some premiere movie tickets. A movie, huh? Yeah, Trunks responds. The live action clean god movie I told you about. Let me tell you, these tickets were not easy to get. Yeah, it's really not my oh. thing, my response. Eh, sorry, young master Pilaf chimes in. A great volume of helper robots had just been recalled at once, so we'll be busy fixing them all for the rest of the month. Yeah, my response. What he said. You, you, you can't take a, a single night off for a dinner and a movie? I'm afraid she cannot, Pilaf responds. Yeah, not even block. a request from you, young master, can keep us from work. Well, and that's because Bulma laid down the law after that business this morning. Oh, well, how long will it take? Impossible to say now, Pilaf responds. It's non-stop as the helper bots just keep getting carted in. But what's the deal with them, Trunks asks? Well, word is they stopped obeying their owners and ran away from their homes, Shu says. Uh, I created these helper bots, Pilaf says, and I don't make mistakes. Someone must have tampered with them. Well, there's a rumor, Shu responds, that when night falls, strange folks appear to meddle with the helper bots. So, if I can catch these weirdos, Trunks says, Mai will have that Saturday night off? If the recall is called off, Pilaf says, of course. Oh, great. I've got some criminals to stop, Trunks shouts. Oh, just you wait, Mai. To where as soon as Trunks had now busted up in his room and having to frighten Goten, that's when Trunks went on to shout, up and at him, Goten. It's say a man action time. Wait, what? We've got a mission? In which a little later on at night, we then finally get to see how Trunks admits that he does in fact have a fear of ghosts with Goten having to remind him, well, that's funny because I'm pretty sure that both of our dads have died and come back as ghosts or whatever. Oh, but that's not, not the same. same, Trunks says. But then it was just as the two were beginning to discuss this where Trunks had gone as far as to bump into an individual by responding, oh, oh, sorry, but to Trunks' terror, as soon as he had gone as far as to look up and staring at the face of a Frankensteinian-like zombie, Trunks from out of nowhere then began to panic and running away Yee. by shouting, I do believe! And literally from that point being shown having to cower in fear as Goten displayed
played no fear at all by responding, Hey Trunks, that must be the culprit. Wait, wait, huh? As coincidentally enough with an old man being shown passing on by with one of his helper bots, the Frankensteinian-like zombie had then gone as far as to press a button and completely being shown having to malfunction the bot with the old man being shown chasing it, Goten from that point had immediately known exactly who the culprit was as Goten went on to ask, See, he must have done something with that little thing, that remote control that he has in his hand. Oh, and he wears that spooky mask to scare people away too. Oh, what a dirty move. In which as dirty as it was with the car being shown having to pass by and flashing their bright lights at them, momentarily the two were shown having to be blinded until having to leap up by responding, Oh no, there, he's getting away in that car. Hey, yeah, maybe we can find the hideout, Trunk says. Let's follow the trail. To which follow the trail they do, because as soon as they had gone as far as to follow this car in leading up a spooky mountain, it was only as they had finally arrived at their destination where they finally also had then realized where they were, with Trunks trying to do the best that he possibly could in mustering up the courage to do this for Mai, because Trunks essentially knew that at this point, if he were able to solve this mystery, then chances are the likelihood of him going out with Mai would be a high probability, so as soon as the boys were shown having to lean up against the window in finding out what was happening inside, they had finally then cracked the mystery in finding out what was truly happening behind the scenes as Goten went on to respond, Whoa, those are those helper robots that are being recalled, right? No, I get it. They're overriding the system's programming to put our bots to work here. So this is where those missing bots from the city ended up, Trunks says. But as quickly as they arrived, one of the individuals there had gone as far as to spot them as the individual went on to shout, Who are you? But it was already too late, not for Goten and Trunks, but instead for their high school friends as unbeknownst to them as they were attempting to hide, we then see how Goten and Trunks' friends were now being held hostage, with Compass being shown literally getting choked out, with Goten responding, Oh wait, aren't those our classmates? Oh great, damn it, they went through with their dare. Ah, you want a beating that bad, huh? Oh, Goten, listen, I'll transform and charge in there, Trunks says. You wait here, got it, Goten says. Oh, I better act fast. Oh, here goes. Oh, wait, wait, it's not working. Oh, maybe I broke it when I smacked it before, but then it turned out that the device had actually worked the entire time with Trunks being shown transforming and swooping on him in knocking away Compass from the individual that was shown choking him. With Trunks now, aka Saiyaman X1, being shown taking matters into his own hands, his friends had now appeared to be very happy to see someone actually step in to stop these guys, with the gang leader being shown having to tell his entire crew to now hunt down and beat Trunks down. But it was only upon each of these individuals being shown taking action where Trunks went as far as to put each and every single one of them down with ease, and rapidly being right shown now. knocking them down, swinging them across walls, as by the end of it, the only individual that was left standing was the gang leader known as Alpha, as Trunks now had set his sights in taking Alpha down, that was when Trunks had gone as far as to dash towards him by shouting, ah, last man standing, huh? Up cycle punch! But just as Trunks had gone as far as to make contact in punching Alpha in the chest, surprisingly enough, nothing happened, as Alpha went as far as to laugh by responding, I'm built different than those others. I'm engineered to eat a wimpy hit like that and then some. And Trunks could not believe it as he from there went on to back off by responding, Oh, you don't say. Then you forced me to go all out. Cyclone style tornado hurricane. But then upon having to swing his hand in such a motion, Trunks now accidentally had gone as far as to flip the switch on his watch in revealing his real identity to Alpha, which was Come a on, very trucks. bad thing because neither of the boys had wanted for this to ever even happen, to which even then, fortunately enough for Trunks, despite him having to reveal his actual identity to Alpha, that was when Goten was quickly shown swooping in with the clutch by opening up the window and quickly being shown blasting the lights generator and knocking out all of the power completely, and not only having everything now be shrouded in darkness, but this also gave Goten and Trunks the significant advantage they needed, especially in order for them to do what they needed in saving their friends, which was exactly what Goten had done, as even with their own friends now being shown in complete disbelief on how they ended up outside, it was just when Goten was shown taking immediate action where his friends went on to respond, Oh, what in the world? We're outside? Wait, uh, aren't you Trunks's old friend? Yeah, I am, Goten says. Oh boy, that was pretty scary, huh? I think the ghosts made all of us see the same illusion. An illusion, Compass asks. When did it start? Um, right Right around when you got near the building, Goten responds. R right. Ah, but of course, naturally, Trunks couldn't.
wouldn't be a Saiyan man himself. Wait, hang on, you're saying that place is really a haunted house, Compass shouts? To which with all three students now being shown running away, meanwhile back inside, Alpha could not seem to see a thing with Trunks being shown having to respond by telling him, oh, I may happen to know exactly where you are. You want to see me that bad, huh? Trunks says as he immediately okay. then gone as far as to turn Super, Super Saiyan. Saiyan. Alpha could not believe as to what he was seeing as Alpha went on to ask, what the hell are you? Well, allow me to introduce myself correctly this time. I am Saiyan Man X1, here to mop up evil. A superhero trunk shouts as with one Super Saiyan punch to the chest, that had now seemed to do the trick in knocking out Alpha completely with Trunks being shown responding, clean up, complete. But just then from out of nowhere, Goten had finally found a backup lever in turning the power back on as a complete massacre around them had occurred with Goten responding, wow, you really let them have it, huh? Yep, now where's Compass in them? Well, headed home, Goten responds. I told him everything was an illusion. Oh, thanks. I almost blew it here, Trunk says. So, who are these guys anyway? Huh. Crab, I knocked them all out before asking, Trunk says. Oh, well, nice going. Oh, there's got to be a clue around here somewhere, and a clue they found, because upon having to stumble upon what seemingly looked as though a laboratory, Trunks found an old rusty safe in which, upon having to open it inside, there seemed to be a small Dr. disc Dr. that read Jiro. Dr. Jiro Confidential, with Goten Jiro. asking, what's that? Oh, I'm not sure, but this is the only thing they had locked up tight, so it must be crazy important data. Well, I'll check it out back home, Trunks says. Says, but all I care about is ending that recall, so anything beyond that is sort of whatever. In which, interestingly enough, outside of this house, we then see how policeman Krillin was on the scene, and from that point being shown getting startled upon having to see Goten and Trunks, with Krillin basically now going as far as to confirm that yes, there does now appear to be a massive case where people are reporting zombies roaming around the city, as meanwhile back inside where all of the carnage ensued, we then get to see how none other than Dr. Hito had returned Hito. Back from the store after purchasing Oreos as Dr. Hito went on to shout what 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 is this all about tell me what happened talk to me alpha we got beaten by a kid with this school crest the, the entire alpha series defeated yeah alpha says oh, but how can this be oh, don't worry Hito responds since you're all corpses I'll have you up and about again in no time but it was just then when Dr. Hito had now noticed that the safe that he had kept secret was now open Open, as he quickly gone as far as to rush forward and having to notice that his disc was now gone with Hito shouting no no where where's the data disc from the safe Th they took it with them alpha says no oh, anything but that there's only one like it in the world oh what a disaster oh, blue hall high school Hito says who could have done this either way this base of operation is finished curses just when our sushi sales were really starting to pick up. I'll have to procure research funds some other way, he says. As meanwhile, the next day with Trunks being shown having to enter through the garage and confronting Pilaf and the gang, that's when Trunks went on to shout, hey, my! So, about this Saturday, but Pilaf went on to quickly intervene by shouting, oh, endless, endless, endless! A oh, day off? Unthinkable, Pilaf shouts. The recall was cancelled, but now we've got small armies worth of broken bots to repair. Yeah, Shu says, they found a whole heap of missing bots in the old place at Mount Butterfly. It seems like someone had smashed them into bits. As with Trunks now taken back and having to shout, I can't believe it! As it was only right then and there during that moment where Dragon Ball Super manga chapter number 88 then comes to a close. Now, you can make no mistake about the fact that if you stop and pay close enough What's attention up? and look very closely, you can see that Toyotaro actually went as far as to put in some detail into this manga chapter because What's there up? are a lot of things about this chapter that stand out in terms of detail, so that is a plus going into this new arc but at the same time how relevant are Goten and Trunks really going to be after the events of Cell Max goes down because we know that they're going to somehow in some kind of way mess fusion up once they inevitably come across Cell Max so is this in fact going to be any different moving forward are they going to maybe introduce a perfected version of Gotenks in this story because I don't think that many people were actual fans of seeing fat Gotenks go as far as to crack Cell Max's cranium yeah. so maybe we we might now find ourselves in a situation to where at least in the manga we see more or less a perfected version of Gotenks versus the overweight bloated version of Gotenks that we saw during the course of the superhero movie but by the that was a cool little slice of life shit you know what I'm saying like 
it was nothing crazy going on, but it was cool. It was cool. Like I, you know, I was so interested in what's going on, but it was just, it was cool. Um, hopefully, it's more some more action, some more setup of what's about to happen and shit, so we can see you. Maybe see Gohan and Piccolo next chapter or whatever. See more Goku, Vegeta, or something like that. But anyway, man, shout out to Unreal Gaming. If you like my reaction, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll catch y'all next time. Peace.